don't seem to see anything. There we go. Hello, hello, what's going on, everybody? Up. Hey, uh, Vegeta, I'm not sure if you know much about Children of the Court or not, but they're actually, there's going to be uh, a reboot coming out. It's actually a prequel, and it was filmed in Australia during COVID. Actually, one of the only productions that were filmed during COVID was Children of the Corn. <laughs> Go figure that one. Uh, you know what? I'm actually pretty excited with... Uh, even though there was tons of crappy sequels. <laughs> I mean, a lot of crappy sequels. I'm excited for this one because it feels like it's going to be taken a lot more seriously. They got a $10 million budget with the thing, right? They took all these special precautions with it. And the way that they managed to film it during COVID was that, uh, trust me, other people are trying to take the advice right now so that they can finish their movies. But what they did was they treated it like it was an indie film. So they got all this different kind of insurance to save their ass, right? And what they did with the cast and the crew, for those who weren't comfortable with doing it, I mean, by all means, like, okay, that's cool, right? But most of them actually said, yeah, we'll actually quarantine with you guys. Let's all quarantine as a cast and crew and let's get this movie done, right? So something about that excitement that they had for the movie makes me excited for it. And I've always been a Stephen King fan. And Children of the Corn's always been a, a scary story. It just hasn't really been executed all that well. Uh, we got the original movie, which is, you know, it has its good moments in it, right? But does it stand the test of time? I don't know. Not necessarily. Not not in all aspects, right? The reboot that was made for it, the TV reboot that was made for it in 2009, I mean, it was okay, right? Like, I had, so, it was a lot more true to the actual story, but there was a lot of other aspects to it I did not like, and I know a lot of other people agree. So, all right, let's see what I want to do here. Uh, I got this one Children of the Corn picture in mind. It actually features Isaac uh, from the original cast. And I might even throw Malachi in there because everyone loves Malachi. I was thinking about doing another photo for the reboot. However, I don't think I'm going to do that just yet until more drops about it, right? But actually, I should show you guys... The photo I have here, I think you guys will like it. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I bet if I just type in corn, I'll find it. That's so funny. Alright. Uh, a lot of stuff on here, isn't it? Okay, cool. Oh, uh, what's going on there, Raw Nation? <clears throat> so this was one photo I made kind of like a little advertisement photo for the new one that's going to come out. So yeah, Kurt Wimmer actually is the one who directed it. Sort of did it anime style. I did it actually for one of the actresses who are in the film and we're on Instagram. Uh, she can't share with me a whole bunch of information about it. Uh, it's, it's understandable, right? They don't uh, they don't want to share it or anything until really more information drops about it, which I totally understand, right? So, with that being said, uh, let me show you guys the rest of this photo here. Now, if you are uh, familiar with the original Children of the Cord, and you are expecting to see... Isaac and Malachi in this new one. It's I uh, don't expect that to happen. I know a lot of people are going to be kind of pissed off about that, but the truth is, 
they're actually going to be sticking a lot closer to the short story than they are with the actual original movie. <clears throat> because in the short story, Isaac doesn't even come in until... He's not even mentioned until way later on, actually, in, in the short story. Pretty much just right at the very end. And he was only leader of the corn, I think, for about a year or maybe two years. So when the whole massacre happened, he would have just been a little tiny kid, right? Um... Amos was actually supposed to be the leader of the corn, the one who starts the entire thing off. Uh, but I guess that's sort of up for debate. I, I gotta reread it. I don't know if they actually stated that Amos is the one that started it or exactly what. But anyways, don't expect Isaac or Malachi in it. And if you do, expect them to be extremely young. <laughs> Alright, so... It's not, the new photo I'm going to do isn't going to be uh, too similar to that because it is going to be based on Isaac there, so, and he's the preacher boy. It's actually uh, sort of like a close-up shot of Isaac, right? I'm going to have... You see the photo that I've already done there, right? It's, it's kind of a close-up shot anyways, but this can be way closer. And I'm going to have some of the kids in the background there, and I'm going to have this crazy-looking presence. I guess that would be he who walks behind the rose, the, the god that they praise. I think what I want to do is actually get the canvas a little bit wider. I'm thinking... I mean, it could be the... Uh, let's see what it looks like like this. Maybe 7 by 7 That's actually not bad. You know what? I think I can work with that. That actually is not bad. Not too shabby. Let's rock this joint, people. <laughs> Isaac's hat. Can't forget that. Fix that out. What's a little bit? Just want to get. It almost looks like Raiden at this point, doesn't it? From Mortal Kombat. <laughs> We need a scorpion in there. All right. Man, it's some badass royalty free music. I gotta see if I can use. I should be able to use this stuff for some of my videos and stuff. This is badass. <clears throat> oh, I'm just using Photoshop there. Uh, Photoshop Elements 2020 Editor. Oh, look at little Isaac there. <laughs> Uh, how am I going to establish that? You know what? Um, it's always kind of a weird approaching certain things like uh, what I'm doing here because there's going to be corn, there's going to be kids. Uh, it's, 
even though this is all just the rough stuff, I just got to figure out how I'm going to, let me just, give me one second here. <laughs> I just got to figure out how I'm going to apply this all. Uh, okay, I need that to be the dominant color then. So, I guess I'll go to lighter blue. That works. That works. Five, four, zero. Cool, I think I should get, ah, that's a good idea. I like that. Okay, hold on. I'm thinking, okay? Okay, so they always seem to do these, um, they got this clearing all the time, right? So I'm gonna just do this to indicate, right? Uh, I want the top of the corn to be about, oh, I don't know, I worry with things, maybe. I guess about here. Something like that. All right. So I'll be the corn stalks. But yeah, they always got this clearing in the corn, and that's where they do all the sacrifices. It's not creep at all, but yeah. Oh, my half ass little uh, purple corn here. Purple corn? Somebody should make a purple form. Now, you know, the scariest thing for me um, about Children of the Corn, and, and I know a lot of people are probably going to say, why are you trying to rehash old ideas and stuff again, and blah, 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 blah. Children of the Corn's been done so many times, and... Uh, you know what? It was in the hands of the wrong property. It really was in the hands of the wrong property there for so long. And now it actually has a chance to do something, right? And it's so relevant, actually, to today. Right? Cults and, and gangs and everything. And really, all it takes is one person. Somebody like this. Somebody like that. Son of a bitch right there. Okay? That's all it takes is one person to start a whole entire cult. And it's not actually that far-fetched. Is it? Is it far-fetched about the whole demon in the corn? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. I don't know, right? I mean, skinwalkers, wendigos, demons, and all that stuff. I mean, that's all up for debate, right? Whether you believe or not. Um, so something like that, an entity that can speak to children. Children are so innocent, too. You know what I mean? They are... Their innocence can be robbed from them. Obviously, they can be turned into monsters, unfortunately. Uh... But they are the innocent souls, right? And I think that what makes so, so much sense about it is that um, that this demon, this god demon thing, right? He who walks behind the rose, if it's speaking to the kids and telling them to kill the adults, well, if you think about it, as scary as it is in a lot of ways, it makes sense. Um, not saying that I hope kids come out and start killing all the adults. I just think the adults need to smart the hell up, right? But a lot of the bad stuff that happens in the world is because of the adults. And a lot of times it's because the way uh, these kids are also raised, too. So it's kind of a haunting thing to think about. I mean, are they creating monsters? I think a lot of them are. And then it just shows kind of, I guess what this movie kind of shows, the monster getting its redemption. You know what I mean? All of them. The one that monster that they they created. Okay, so I'm gonna figure out where I wanna put these kids in here. I think Isaac's hat's gonna actually need to go on a bit more of a slant as well, an upward slant. Uh, I'll play around with it a little bit more. Remember, this is just rough designing right now, so let's see what we can do over. I want the kids, okay, if I were to draw the kids over here, obviously that'd be an adult. And it's supposed to be tall grass, so these gotta be kids. In other words, I gotta draw them pretty, pretty tiny, right? I just gotta get little indicators of whereabouts they're gonna be. I'm gonna have them kind of hiding in the corn there, right? You know what? Oh, that's a good idea. They should be raising their knives and pitchforks and stuff. That'd be really cool. Yeah.
Ah, it's just super rough, whatever, right? Because like I said, this is just so I can get a, like kind of like a little base thing going. A lot of this is going to be hidden in the cornfields anyways. <laughs> you get one kid just kind of creeping out right there. Some little weirdo. Big smile. <laughs> oh, that'll be fixed. Uh, yeah, they do this. See, you know what I mean? So it's not actually far-fetched to believe that a little rural town could actually be taken over by the children, right? Because the adults have sinned so much, have ruined so much for them. Right? And in this case, with the children of the corn, have not all only done that, but also ruined the crops for the corn. And if that's what they're relying on their entire life, if that's what they've been brought up to believe, and the adults are just abusing the land and everything, and all of a sudden some entity starts speaking out to the kids, right, and saying the reason why the corn won't grow, the reason why this is happening and this is happening and blah, 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 is all because of the adults. And if you get rid of them, I will give you okay. corn. I will give you rain for the corn. I'll give you everything else. In fact, I'll even make sure that nobody can ever come into the town here again. And unless I give you a test, right? If I want to test you, then that'll be a different story. Which is obviously what happens in the, uh, the short story. Because two adults end up driving into Gatlin, and it's years after, and it's a ghost town. They don't even know what, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Like, logically, it wouldn't make any sense. Somebody would have actually had to have seen this town at some point and reported on it or something, right? But somehow, I mean, that's what makes it creepy, too, is that this god ended up making sure that anyone who would probably come near the town would not even be able to come close unless it wanted to test these kids out, right? As long as they're loyal to it. But here's the creepy thing with the kids, if you didn't know about Children of the Corn, they gotta retain their youth, which means that they have to kill themselves off at the age of 18 and walk into the cornfield at night with their supposed god, right? It's a creepy-ass concept. I mean, it really is. If you check out a lot of the sequels, a lot of them have been really bad. The sequel to the original, actually, it had a lot of potential. I mean, it, it there's a lot of cheesiness in it. The actor, Ryan Bullman, who I, I talked to, actually, quite a bit, he's uh, a really good guy. And he kind of played the Maya, the Isaac part. He played the leader. And for what the role actually was, I mean, it, the guy did an amazing job. You guys should check him out. He's a kick-ass actor, that guy. Ryan Bullman is his name. But yeah, the role was a little bit different for the sequel, uh, for being a leader. And some people, I guess some people didn't really like that. You know what I mean? They, they liked that... Uh, sort of calm, somewhat essence about Isaac. And the fact that Isaac also kind of came off as a true preacher. You know what I mean? Somebody that if you were a kid and this was actually happening, you'd probably legit believe it. And you would probably kill your parents with a smile on your face because you would believe what Isaac was telling you, right? You do it with a smile on your face thinking you're freeing your parents. It's scary, right? Because that, yeah, that's all it takes is for a cult to really kind of get started is somebody to prove to you in some sort of definitive way and, and whatever. I mean, you could be going through something and want to believe anything, right? So at that point, um, somebody could have told you something a million times, but somebody says it to you in one way. And for some other reason, all of a sudden it just changes your mind. And then you get sucked into this whole cult thing, right? So yeah, it is a, a perfect time for them to actually do a theatrical Children of the Corn reboot this time. And I am glad that they are doing it as a prequel story. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning. 
Look at this little bugger over here. But yeah, it's going to be a prequel story, which means we're not going to see Bert and Vicky come into the town and uh, encounter these creepy little kids over here. What we're going to see is actually the whole entire fiasco take place in the actual small town. We're going to find out why the kids hate the adults so much. Because that never gets explained in the movies. And that's something else that people complain about too, right? Saying, man, you're literally writing a script that has nothing to do with Children of the Corn. You, you guys probably sat down together and said, okay, we got to renew the Children of the Corn and Hellraiser again. And this, I'm talking about Dimension Films, right? So I'm giving a big whole lash out at Dimension Films and Harvey Weinstein for uh, their bullshit that they've done for so many years. But I, this is no doubt that they would probably all sit down and say, okay, Children of the Corn and Hellraiser, we don't want to lose the rights again. Okay, go go, go through the pile and find some scripts. Uh, all right, all right. So let's take a look at this one. Well, if we had some kids, we had a little tiny bit of corn in here. We, that, that could be a Children of the Corn film, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Can we film it in two weeks? Sure, let's do it. Can we film it in a week and a half? Even better, let's do it. Hellraiser, same sort of deal, you know what I mean? The only thing that I, I really appreciate about Hellraiser and the last remake was that it was a little bit different. Uh, I know a lot of people are like up, they have their ups and downs about how they feel about it. And the truth is the budget wasn't there for it. If they had the budget, that film would have been, would have been phenomenal. It would have been amazing. It would have been probably one of the best Hellraiser movies ever, even without Doug Bradley, because Paul Taylor killed it as Hellraiser. Unlike Hellraiser Revelations and we got Bobblehead Pinhead, I couldn't believe that. That was that was a joke. If you guys have ever seen Revelations, <laughs> hey, you can watch it on a bad movie night, and you can even include Dragon Ball uh, Evolution in there if you really want. <laughs> Why not? Get some good laughs. And hey, that Dragon Ball Evolution movie. It's a fantastic movie if you don't take it seriously. If you watch it as a complete parody of Dragon Ball Z and everything Dragon Ball stood for. Man, that's a hilarious. That's a funny movie, dude. That is actually, that kills me, that movie. I could actually watch that movie and just be like, what the hell are they thinking? This is great. It's almost like watching uh, Family Guy or something, you know? <laughs> Which wasn't their intention, obviously, but uh, yeah. Well, I guess it all depends on how you look at it. If you look at it as a parody, bullcrap version of Dragon Ball, it becomes one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh, I am drawing on the wrong layer there, apparently. Okay, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Before I actually do that, I want to establish... Where in the hell... Um, I don't know. Should this be a night scene, or should this be a day scene? I mean, that's up for debate. Night or day, what do you think? Because if it's night, I could slap the moon in. I could do kind of like a big moon in the back. You know what I mean? I could do a, I could do one off in the, in the end there. Like this. And kind of shine down a little bit on, on the corn. And if it is day, I mean, I could replace that with the sun. I just don't know if it, the day will get as necessarily that creepy effect. But everything will pop more. But will it look as scary? I don't think so. And plus... Well, there's there's a benefit, actually, with the daytime. is If I'm doing this he who walks behind the rose figure in the back, let's just give some kind of weird ghoulish figure, right? So let's say I have the sun already up in here, right? There's Mr. Sun all happy and shit. Right? He's happy because all the kids killed all the adults. Right? There we go. <laughs> and here we go. So now we got some creepy weird little figure thing with devil ears for some reason. There we go. And he's going to have a big smile on his face. Right? There we go. Okay. So basically what we're looking at here <laughs> in the most simplest, cheesiest sort of way is a night, uh, a daytime scene. Okay? And you'd actually be able to see this figure a lot better, right? This this guy, that dude. If it's nighttime, he may not pop through as well. 
But then again, it all depends on how I do the lighting. Because if I were to go with that one idea I was talking about with the big old moon, right, like this, I could actually have that figure be inside of the moon. Kind of like E.T., you know what I mean? Do an E.T. phone home kind of effect with the Children of the Corn. Ooh, knife? All right. That's what I was thinking, too. That's what I was thinking. All right. And yeah, take you if you ever uh, go to watch Children of the Cord now because of this. <laughs> the kid who plays Isaac here, he actually a dwarfism. Uh, I believe he was actually 21 when he did the role. But he played it so well. Uh, I mean, literally, it's, it's, I think that's what won the whole entire thing was the fact that he was older, but appeared younger. So he could actually pull off these adult gestures way easier than a kid would, right? And the mannerisms, the way he talks, I mean, the, the guy literally went to uh, a whole bunch of different churches and watched the preachers. He stayed up late watching those uh, preacher shows. You know, the crazy ones where, you better listen to God, boy, because if you don't, you're going to go burn in the fires of hell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can I get a hallelujah? What about you over there? What about you? What about you? Those people are fucking... Those, those, those. But he would actually sit back and legit watch those people just to study the role to be able to play this. You know what I mean? He didn't go all out nuts like that, but he took the best parts of it, I think. Uh, you could tell that uh, John Franklin, the, the kid who uh, played Isaac, was definitely a method actor. And um, funny, funny fact, he ended up playing uh, Cousin It off of uh, uh, the Adams Family. Yep, that height worked out perfect for him. <laughs> I probably won't be able to get too much more done here with this, because uh, Jeno will be coming home soon. Oh, you know what? Yeah, because if I, I don't want to rush through this thing. So if I'm going to do anything, uh, I am going to establish that tonight one. So yeah, I'm going to get all just the rough stuff here. I'll try to pop on later as well and get back to it. I'll also have the, uh, the other horror art photo that I was starting. I don't know. I was just it's feeling like drawing some children of the corn. Uh, if you guys are wondering about Dark World, that is actually in the works. I have been doing a lot of work, actually, with the uh, the rough storyboard. There's been some rewrites with it and stuff, because I, I want to make sure everything is going to be up to par with it, and everything's going to be, you know, really good and really creepy and violent and true. Because we're diving into human trafficking now, and that's a terrible thing. And obviously, if you guys have seen anything about Hollywood... You know how relevant that is, unfortunately. So, uh, that whole Epstein thing as well. There is a character in Dark World that is very representative of him. And the reason why, I mean, Dark World is all about exposing as well. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure that I remember what the hell this thing is. I don't want to look at it later on and be like, I don't get it. <laughs> But yeah, there's a character in Dark World that's kind of representative of, of Epstein. And if you guys have seen the part two of Dark World, at the very ending, um, that is the character right there. Very creepy line, he says, too. And it's actually going to be continuing off basically right from part two as well. So, of course, it deals with a cornfield in that scene. Go figure that out. That was sort of a Children of the Corn reference. I had to do it. I just felt like, you know what? They're going off. Uh, these two bad guys are going to be driving off. They got, unfortunately, they stole a bunch of kids in their van. And they're driving off to go and deliver them off to a boat or something. I was like, I could show the whole boat scene. Dark Wolf could come by and do all of his stuff there. I was like, but you know what? I don't want them to get that far. I don't even want them to get that far. I want these guys to die right now. <laughs> I want them to die on the way to the place, right? 
So that's why I had them uh, kind of driving through a cornfield. And, of course, I was talking to Ryan Bowman, uh, the actor of Children of the Corn 2 at the time. So I just said, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm totally throwing in a Children of the Corn reference. No one's going to get it, except I will. <laughs> now, I will also be doing um, another Children of the Corn fan photo, which I can actually do live for you guys if you want. It will actually be for Ryan Bowman. I told him I was going to be doing a, a new one for him. Because I already have done one. And he's posted around, which is really awesome. If you guys want, you can check out his uh, Facebook page on there. Children of the Corn 2, The Final Sacrifice. Uh, he just hit uh, a thousand likes on it. He's really excited about it. And I know if you guys are a fan of the, the franchise at all. Even if you guys didn't really care much for the second film if you guys enjoyed his performance for it i'm sure he would love you to come on in and let him know but for now i'm gonna let this go because jenna was just about home and we got a new camera we got a new camera we finally got a new camera how exciting is that i'm i am so thrilled got a new mic too which unfortunately I'd, i'm not using right now I'm, i should have <laughs> maybe next stream i'll start using it i'll start remembering but uh, finally got a new camera. I can't believe it. And that means that quality for everything is going to be up dramatically. Uh, I'm talking full 1080p on our horror and everything. It's going to be good stuff. So that last video that we just released, the Randonautica one. That's going to be the last time you guys see the footage looking like that. Everything is going to be a lot more crisp and clean. Which is not just... Uh, I guess not just necessarily, I should say, for the viewers per se, but really because me and Jen, we started doing this whole recording with the paranormal because we started, well, I mean, we have a haunted apartment, right? And we just wanted to kind of document our own evidence. And the whole thing about me going to Boyd Cemetery, I mean, we've driven by the place so many times. Every time we go to uh, the pet store to, uh, to get food for the tarantulas, we always pass by it and we always look at it and go, Man, that's a creepy cemetery. We got to go there sometime. So we finally did it, and ever since then, everything's, you know, I guess excelled a little bit more. And maybe not so much excelled as more as we, now we recognize it really for what it is, right? And kind of going into this whole little experiment of figuring out who's trying to communicate with us, especially this Bob character. Uh, and, you know, this there's Wendigos and Skinwalkers around here, allegedly. It's, it's crazy, but now with the new footage, um, me and Jen will be able to document it a lot easier. Because, you know, sometimes when we're editing, we'll be stuck on a part for about 10 minutes and going, is that a, is that a camera glare or, or are we going nuts? But now it's not going to be like that so much. Um, we'll actually be able to spot things a lot easier. And for you guys, too, if you guys are, are watching those videos and you guys are trying to spot stuff or hear things that we haven't, then... For both ways, this is going to make it actually a thousand times easier. With a new mic, a new camera, so it's time to finally step up the game a little bit, you know. Uh, we've done it with the art, and now we're going to finally start doing it with uh, all 